Hello and welcome to Parrot's training videos for the Anafi AI. In this video, we'll walk through the Free Flight 7 application. If you haven't already done so, please download the app from the Apple Store now so that you can follow along during the video. Let's begin. To follow along in this Free Flight 7 walkthrough, you want to make sure that your smart device is connected to the Sky Controller 4 and they're both powered on. You'll also want to make sure your aircraft is powered on and the system is connected. When you plug your tablet into the Sky Controller 4, it will automatically detect it and ask you if you would like to open Free Flight 7. Press Allow. This will bring you to the main fly screen of the Free Flight 7 application. To navigate to the dashboard, press the four buttons in the top right hand corner. This is the dashboard of the Free Flight 7 application. In our previous video, we looked at our Parrot Cloud account. Here we can set our email, log into our Pix4D account, and change our data sharing preferences. Let's go back to the main page. First let's take a look at the Sky Controller 4. Here we can see our serial numbers, our software numbers, if we're connected to the drone, and if a software update is needed. Let's go back to the main page. Here let's select aircraft. Selecting on the aircraft we can also see all the pertinent information including if we're connected to cellular, our last GPS location, if we need any software updates, and if we need to complete a calibration. On the Anafi AI, there are multiple calibrations that need to be completed. A gimbal, the horizon, the magnetometer, and the obstacle avoidance. The system will alert you when any of these calibrations are needed. Now let's navigate to our flight logs that can be stored in the Parrot Cloud. Select on the green box in the bottom left. Here we can view different information from our previous flight including GPS path. Selecting on the proper flight we can move around and see our 3D path. We also have the ability to edit the flight's name so that we can save it for recognition later on. Each flight log will tell you your time of flight, the battery used, and the total distance flown. We also have the ability to share this flight log or delete it if needed. In addition to our flight logs, we can also see our executed projects. These represent both our photogrammetry projects and our flight plans. From this page, we can open previous projects. Here we can see all the pertinent information so we can duplicate this project if needed. In the top right hand corner, under our username, we see the word synchronized. This means that all of our missions and flight plans are synchronized with the Parrot Cloud. Let's move into the Projects tab. In projects, we have the ability to see our different flight plan and photogrammetry projects. Here, we have the ability to create a new mission, duplicate the mission, or delete the mission, depending on what we would like to do. We can also see that these missions are synchronized with the Parrot Cloud by looking in the top right hand corner. Let's take a look at medias. Here we can see all the different photos and videos saved to the drone's internal memory in the SD card, in addition to the local memory of the phone or tablet being used. In the Medias tab, we also have the ability to download, delete, and format the SD card. From the dashboard, press the fly button to navigate to the heads-up display of the Free Flight 7 app. On the top bar of the HUD, we can see our speed, altitude, and distance. We can also see if the obstacle avoidance is on or off. Next to that is the compass wheel. The battery life of the controller and if it has GPS, the aircraft's battery and if it has GPS, and if we're operating on 4G or Wi-Fi. Next to that is the settings menu and we'll talk about that in a moment. Here is our zoom level and our camera angle. On the bottom of the screen we have our missions tab, we'll go over this in another video. Next to that we have our preset, and next to that we have our mode. We can be in video, photo, time lapse, GPS lapse, panorama, bracketing, or burst mode. Next to that we have the ability to change our different camera settings. We can change the ISO, the exposure value, the white balance, turn HDR on and off, navigate to our 4K or 1080 settings, and navigate to our frames per second. Next to our camera settings we have our shutter button to allow us to take photos and videos. Let's talk about the settings menu now. To navigate to the settings press the wheel in the top right hand corner. This will bring up our quick settings. The first setting is to change the map to a 3D view. This will allow us to see the obstacles that the aircraft can see. When we're sitting on the ground like we are now, it's not going to pick up too many. We will demonstrate the obstacle avoidance in later videos. Now let's navigate back to the settings. Here we can turn obstacle avoidance on and off. We can also turn the audio on and off. We can turn our geo cage on and off. We can turn on the lossless zoom only function. 
and we have the ability to auto record at takeoff if we desire. Let's go to the controls. The first control we can change is the zoom wheel to the exposure wheel. We can also change what joystick mode we would like to operate in, whether that be mode 1 or mode 2. And we have the ability to inverse the joysticks if we desire. Now let's go into the advanced settings. In the advanced settings we'll first see our presets. Here we can adjust the controls to our liking. This will allow us to hone in on the camera tilt speed, if we would like the aircraft to complete bank turns, the inclination angle, the vertical speed, and the rotation speed. You will tune these settings into your liking as you fly the aircraft. To reset these options, press the Reset Sports Settings button. Now let's take a look at the interface. Here we can change the map type from plan to satellite to hybrid, and we can also change our measurement system from auto to metric or imperial. Now let's move on to GeoCage. GeoCage will allow us to set a cage around us that the aircraft can operate. We can make this as small or as large as we desire. Now let's go into our return to home settings. Here we can return to the takeoff point or the pilot's position. We can end by hovering or by landing. We can set our hovering altitude and we can change the altitude at which the aircraft will return to the home point at. It's important to confirm all of these settings before each and every flight. Moving on to record settings, we can quickly turn on the display over exposure. This will allow us to enable different lines on the screen to see what parts of the image are exposed in real time. We also have the ability to digitally sign pictures which allows us to verify which images have and have not been taken by the aircraft. Here we can change the video encoding, change the video HDR mode, and activate anti-flickering if we so desire. Let's go into the connection page. First on, we can turn on or off the cellular access. We can navigate our network preferences by preferring 4G, Wi-Fi, or setting the system to auto, where it will check every 100 milliseconds which network is stronger. We have the ability to set an APN if we desire. We can see our Wi-Fi network name and set the password if we need to. We can see which channels are being used in the spectrum analyzer. We can manually select channels that we would like to stay on, or we can allow the system to operate in auto mode where it will automatically find the cleanest channel. At the bottom, we have the ability to broadcast our drone remote ID. This will be important in years to come. You should now have a good working knowledge of the Free Flight 7 application. In the next video, we'll walk you through the preparation of the aircraft for its first flight. Thanks for tuning in to Paired Training Videos with the Anafi AI.